So our next speaker will be here in person, and this is Rodrigo Verano. Um, Rodrigo is a postdoctoral fellow in the Department of Classics at the Autonomous University of Madrid in Spain. He's held posts in Colombia, in America, in Spain, and he's studied in the ne Netherlands and in Israel. His research focuses on ancient Greek linguistics, especially orality and its presence and rep representation in written works. Um, and he's collaborated for several years with Urban Prescriptions, which is an architectural cooperative working in deprived areas of the city. And in 2016, started an educational program in a refugee camp in North Greece. During his year in Colombia, he ran the project that he will describe today, which is called Reading Homer in and Outside Bars, an educational project in post-conflict Colombia. And so we have a PowerPoint. Do you have a handout or? Excellent. I just have to figure out how to minimize this. Can I take my photo from here? I'm fine, thank you. But yes, you can, yes. Thank you very much, uh, Jessica, Amit, the organizers, uh, all the members of the uh, affiliated group on classics and social justice. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. I have slightly changed the title of my talk. I will explain why, but the ingredients remain the same. Uh, there is Homer, there is uh, the Colombian conflict and prisons. So. Uh, Yeah, I would like to talk to you about a journey uh, to Ithaca from Guaviare, which is the name of both a river and a region uh, in the heart of Colombia. And this is where this travel starts, in Colombia, where I was lecturing in ancient Greek at Los Andes University in Bogota last year. Uh, there I was asked to teach a survey course on Homer to 50 students, and I took the opportunity of teaching this course as a challenge. Because I find that these two books, the Iliad and the Odyssey, sometimes uh, get lost uh, under a sort of socio-cultural cliche, as we know, uh, all of us, uh, what these books are about even before we start to read them. And this happens all the time with readers who are students, that they skim classical literature finding in those texts only what, whatever they are uh, expecting to find and taking from them where, what they are expecting to uh, take. So I shaped uh, my challenge into the form of a question. And the question was, how can I fight these preconceived ideas and make these young people do an active reading of Homer? And that question led immediately to another one. What would it mean to read the Iliad and the Odyssey in Colombia today? I don't have to tell you that Colombia is going through a historical moment. After more than 50 years of conflict, the war seems to be coming to an end, and all of society feels the importance of the moment. There is an open and massive debate on the so-called post-conflict context, meaning the transformation through which the country has to go in order to learn how to live in peace. Um, so my idea was, Let's read the Iliad and the Odyssey as a complete journey through the problem of identity for human beings when they face the transition from war to peace, uh, from an identity placed and settled in violence to an environment where uh, people have to live with each other and find peaceful solutions when problems arise. Uh, it is exactly the same idea conveyed by this sculpture by the Colombian artist Alex Sastoke, currently exhibited in the permanent collection of the Museum of the Army in Bogota. Uh, the name of the sculpture is Metamorphosis, and to me it tells perfectly the story contained in Homer's poems. The story of men that have to learn not to live as warriors anymore and have to find their way home. But you know, home is still far away, and getting back to it becomes a tricky issue uh, for an apparently impatient Odysseus. <laughs> Uh, for after all, why is it so hard to find Ithaca again? Uh, we know the islands don't move through the ocean. 
Is it perhaps the man who once lived there, who has moved somehow after 10 years of war? Uh, here you have, uh, in Latimer's translation, the beginning of the story that Odysseus tells to the Phaeacians. Uh, I like this passage very much because it perfectly describes the state of these men after leaving Troy. To sum up, they, they just arrived in a random place and did what, what they were used to doing. Uh, they kill the men, destroy the city, rape the women, and take the gold. <laughs> now let's move ourselves to Colombia and say a few things about the Iliad this country has been living for more than 50 years. Uh, the big picture obtained from international media points at a sort of asymmetrical conflict between Colombian governments, on the one hand, and uh, a number of left-wing guerrilla groups, the most important of which are the Revolutionary Armed Force of Colombia, known as FARC, and the National Liberation Army, highly influenced by uh, liberation theology. The truth is that these are only a part of a picture of a conflict that actually involves many, many other actors, some of them originating in Colombia, such as paramilitary groups or crime syndicates, and others being international, stemming from the interests of uh, the US and the so-called Bolivarian governments and the big companies in the territory. This is a very concise and, of course, not at all accurate, uh, for obvious reasons, uh, representation of the timeline of a conflict that dates back at least two centuries, uh, starting with the Spanish decolonization process and the fight among different parties uh, on what should be the model of nation building. Some of the highlights are the uh, War of 1000 Days at the beginning of the uh, 20th century, uh, the murder of the leftist leader Jorge Eliezer Gaitán in 1948, whose death, uh, whose death, uh, death gave birth to a period known in the history of the country as the violence with capital letters. Uh, in the 60s, the organization of a communist or philo-communist movements encouraged by the success of the Cuban Revolution, the taking of the Justice Palace in 1985 with a highly controversial intervention of the Colombian army, two decades of terror, at least, sponsored by narco-criminal leader Pablo Escobar, more recently meetings in La Habana, a referendum on peacemaking whose result was negative in 2016, and finally a ratified agreement with FARC. I cannot stress too much how complicated, how intricate this conflict is. This is not just a war between left and right for the nation building model. Uh, there are many issues involved in a sort of web uh, that is extremely difficult to untangle. But at least some of them, sorry, some of the threats of this web are becoming clearer. After the ratification of the agreements of La Habana, the FARC guerrilla group has definitely demobilized. They have begun their transformation into a political force, and as you see in the picture, they have, be, they have started their own journey to Ithaca. Uh, I will present now some selected passages of the other Odyssey, uh, the ancient one, to show how they fit in our proposed interpretation. You are all familiar with these verses, which are one of the most distinctive formulae in the Odyssey. Wherever he goes, uh, the hero has to face questioning about his, his identity, like in who are you, of what people, where is your town and kindred, etc. Certainly, my students know very well that this is a sample of formulaic composition. But is that all, we wonder? Is it not meaningful that a hero who has just left behind his identity as a soldier and who has to find out what kind of man he has become after 10 years of slaughter keeps being asked again and again, who are you every time he arrives in a new place? This must be difficult questions, for we all know that many times he chooses to answer with lies. Evasion, indeed, is a common practice among war veterans, sometimes including the use of drugs to induce oblivion, as in the well-known episode of the Lotus Eaters. But memory is a key word in post-conflict contexts. Those things that were done during the war have to be remembered in order to get assumed by society. And sometimes we need to hear our own story from the lips of someone else, as Odysseus did in Alcinous's palace when he attended the performance of the bard who sang the events of the Trojan War uh, in these verses. Under these circumstances, remembering can be painful. And so when he heard 
uh, the Iliad, Odysseus couldn't help sobbing. But the exercise of memory finally requires the construction of our own story by ourselves. And it is almost at the end of the, his journey, among the Phaeacians, when Odysseus, being asked, asked about, about his identity, as he had been many times before, decides finally to tell the truth and answer, I am Odysseus, son of Laertes, who for all craft am not among men. Meanwhile, in Ithaca, the other side of conflict has taken place. The king, husband, and father is absent. The household can barely bear the abuse of the suitors. Penelope is in great distress, and the young Telemachus just don't know, doesn't know, sorry, how to answer to the question, are you the son of Odysseus? The stranger, he says. Uh, I, uh, my mother says I am his child. I myself do not know. Actually, from the perspective of those who stayed in Ithaca, Odysseus's condition is the most despairing, a miserable of those produced by an armed conflict, the missing person. To his family and friends, he's neither dead nor alive. He's just gone. So they cry for him as he's not coming back, but on the other hand, they just can't move on either. Uh, the period in Alcinous's house worked most effectively as a peacemaking school for Odysseus. In their company, he was able to see with his own eyes the lifestyle of a community that enjoys the benefits of peace. And so the king describes his people to the stranger. We are not faultless boxers, no, no wrestlers. Dear to, our, to us is ever is the feast, the harp, the dance. We also attend a situation where Aureolus provokes Odysseus and he first reacts with violence and rage. But the intervention of the king steers the situation towards what appears to be a very polite conversation between two gentlemen here. Okay, these are, these are just some examples of themes we consider together in, in class and how they work. As a result of this ex uh, experience, some of the students decided to do their final papers on topics combining the poems of Homer and the current situation of the country. And not unsurprisingly, uh, not surprisingly, sorry, uh, many of these essays turned out to be excellent. So I started thinking, why not to collect these papers into a beautiful book approaching the Colombian post-conflict through the Iliad and the Odyssey? Okay, I will take up here later, but now we have to move ourselves to present. Because before the course on Homer had started, I was teaching a workshop on general literature and literary writing in the prison called Carcel Modelo uh, in Bogotá. Any prison is a very complicated reality. Uh, back in Spain, uh, even before I, I arrived in Colombia, I had been working for a distance learning university in prisons for two years, and I know very well that carrying out any formal activity behind bars entails a lot of work for obvious reasons. Uh, in Colombia, additionally, the living conditions of the inmate population are rather bad, and that is always an issue. But on the other hand, uh, Carcel Modelo is lucky to have a number of people working there. I mean, policemen and people from the uh, human rights department of the prison who are really into making the lives of the inmates better. So when I proposed to organize a workshop on literature, they said yes, and they did their share to make it possible. Well, the workshops were a lot of fun. Uh, we read texts, usually short stories, and talked about them. We explored creativity through exercises, um, some of them written, some of them oral, because there are literacy issues among the inmates, of course. And um, after my university course started, I began to use the last 15 minutes of every session in prison to talk about Homer and set a sort of discussion on the Iliad, the Odyssey, and the Colombian post-conflict, as I was doing uh, at the university. And this worked out, especially for those who were the most motivated in the workshops. And a couple of th these guys uh, happened to write very well. So it occurred to me, why not to invite them to write some essays and add uh, these essays to those of the college students and then make a really beautiful book with all of them. So one day I went to prison with several copies of the Odyssey and gave them away to whoever wanted one. And that I know of, two of the inmates read it and uh, started working on their papers. And I could just have waited uh, then uh, uh, to finish and, and collect the papers, but I really wanted the book to be the result uh, of a real discussion, uh, discussion among all the people involved. 
And that's how my new obsession started. Uh, how to gather the students from the university and the inmates in the same room to talk about the Colombian post-conflict and Homer. And um, uh, long story short, we did it <laughs> with some students from the university and some colleagues uh, of the department. Uh, we went to Carcel Modelo and spent a whole morning discussing uh, the Odyssey and what Colombia is going through. And the experience was just amazing. Uh, we talk about justice, we talk about nostos, we talk about facing home after having been a long time away. Uh, this, this, it was a very special day. Uh, this is the family picture. Um, and I think this follows also with what some of the things we were discussing yesterday in the meeting is uh, how can we do things and still have a human life um, with a human working day. Uh, well, now back to the book. Uh, the book's title uh, is going to be Aitaka desde Guaviare, to Ithaca from Guaviare, and hopefully it will be published within this year. Uh, the university is now considering it. So, cross finger. Uh, with the contributions of uh, seven college students and one inmate from Carcel Modelo. The other, unfortunately, couldn't make it. Well, uh, if you only take uh, the book as the final outcome of the whole thing, you may find my productivity uh, kind of weak. Uh, I mean, it seems like a lot of effort and time invested. Uh, just several students and one inmate writing papers. I don't know. I mean, of course, the fact that one person finds uh, time to read the Odyssey in such a um, special environment as a prison is, that means an extraordinary success to me. But that's not even the point of the whole thing. The, the point of the experience, to me, is that it proves something in which I strongly and firmly believe, that when it comes to the big issues of our day, our problems and concerns as uh, a society, humanities and classical literature have a role to play. And if we succeed in placing them in the right place at the right time, they become a powerful guidance to help us to find a way through this mess to Ithaca. Thank you. Well, I'm not in the country anymore, so now I'm actually thinking about new projects. Uh, but you know, every project uh, is related to the place where you are and the community uh, with which you are involved. So uh, now I'm in Spain, so I will just start over and think about a different thing. Please. Yeah. And so I think, so I'm encouraging people, and I want us to put it on our, we have a blog site, work site, that, that we should let people know these are examples, but they're not solutions, because where you're at is, is really a, a prime consideration. And, you know, so I find in New York State it would be impossible to have that, that meeting. But I know in other states it is possible. And so I think that's, we don't have the answers. We have examples. Yeah. It was very hard to, to have it there, too. Well, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Roberta? Yeah. It was, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, it was actually more like a, w a work in progress. Uh, um, of course, writing skills are important. People are not used to write, so they just don't do it. They don't feel comfortable. 
but um, that, that was never a plan. I mean, I, I just I, I just happened to be there um, and, and, and um, teach in these workshops, and it, it just happened. Uh, so you, you find people, and they are interested. Okay, so you just keep exploring, and then uh, and we talk and talk, and then some of those guys happen to write very well. So I talk to them, say, "Would you like to uh, join this project? I don't know if it's if it's working finally or not, but would you like to try?" And they say yes. And finally, one got to uh, finish the paper and, and managed to uh, give it to me. So it's it's more like uh, something that it's it's happening, it's going on, and you just observe and, and look around and try to do whatever you you can. Yeah, I mean, every I have been working in four prisons in Spain, and, uh, and even in Spain, which is a, a one country, a, a very tiny country actually, uh, um, each prison has different uh, is a different reality, and there are some things you you can manage to get here, but it are just yeah. impossible even to think about it in, in other um, establishments. So. Um, uh, here, uh, yeah, the only I mean, one of the one of the inmates got lost in translation. So, uh, um, but the other one, uh, yeah, he he gave me a handwritten manuscript, of course. Um, well, uh, I have been able to uh, stay in touch with him uh, thanks to uh, the help of some friends who are still going there for other workshops. Uh, so um, uh, if I have to correct something in the in the draft, um, I send him a message. Or uh, would you agree with uh, changing this or those? It's difficult, of course. It is. <laughs> 